deep in the night Your heart fills with dread Probably a murderer who wants you dead It could be a ghost, a demon or worse Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse It's hopeless, you're doomed You'd call a priest if you could You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? Well, hello and welcome to our Freaky Friday, the last Friday before the Christmas holiday. And we've got a, a gift for you today, a <laughs> gift you've all been asking for. It almost seems like all year long. So we thought it was a perfect time to wrap it up and give it to you. And to reveal it under the tree. Yes. Yes, we have some special guests at the end of this holiday lineup of Freaky Friday stories. The Inge. You'll get to hear some non-holiday stories, but definitely freaky from our friends at Let's Go to Court. Yeah, Brady and Kristen joined us and told us two hilarious stories. And as you can imagine, we also just had a great time talking all things funny, creepy, criminal, all of our favorite things. So hopefully you will enjoy that as the the gift that we meant it for you all. And thank you to everybody who we got. There was a petition. There were posts. <laughs> we were getting emails. And I've we were never finally... had a petition, to my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, right? I've never had a petition to started. My- knowledge about something for, <laughs> yeah. that has to do with me if there is another one out there i probably don't want to know but this was a positive petition so i was <laughs> yes. very happy to be a part of it yes that see whenever you band together change can happen so thank you all so much yeah. uh for encouraging that we there was nothing stopping us except scheduling and figuring it yeah. out so we're very glad we can make it happen but in the interim we have Quite a lineup of what Christmas cheer and also fucking fear. <laughs> Christmas fear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ho, ho, holy shit. Honestly. Is some of the reactions to these stories. <laughs> well, thank you for, as always, curating this lineup. And thanks to everybody who sent these in because, like I said, we laughed and we went, oh, God, what happened on Christmas? <laughs> I've been holding on to some of these. So uh, some of these may have been submitted a while back. So I hope that if you were the person that submitted this, you've stuck around to hear it because, you know, I, I, I got a system. Some I of told them you. Like, these are more holiday like I'm going to save them for this. You know, I got little folders and whatnot. When you're the story sommelier, you have to understand <laughs> the order that the drinks that they're being put in front of you. So thank you for that. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I'm Christy. I'm Heather. And let's get freaky. This first one is from Tiffany. And Tiffany, hard relate. The subject line is never should have purchased an elf <laughs> on the shelf. <laughs> Tiffany writes, Hey there, lovely ladies. I'm still only on your 2018 episodes, 61st to be exact. So I probably won't hear you read this until maybe December, which would be perfect considering my story I'm about to share. So back when my daughter was, I think, six or seven, I was an idiot and decided to get an elf on a shelf. I always thought those things were creepy as fuck, but since I have four kiddos, I thought it could be fun. My children's current ages are 18-year-old girl, 17-year-old boy, 11-year-old girl, her name is Mary, and this story involves her, and a 9-year-old girl. First, let me tell you that when Mary was four, for some reason, she was convinced that Santa would come in our house and kill us all in our sleep. No, we never watched Krampus or any of that scary stuff with her. She also hated mascots at the time, so I took this as a great opportunity to tell her That the Tooth Fairy isn't real, the Easter Bunny isn't real, and Santa isn't real. Less money and pressure from mom and dad. I purchased a girl elf on the shelf, and my youngest at the time named her Crystal. Nothing happened with her. My older children and I enjoyed hiding her around and have the younger two find her doing crazy shit. Crystal told my youngest how to do the Skittle Rainbow trick with hot water and was once frozen in a jar by Elsa, My youngest had a toy Elsa doll and other shenanigans. Great. What fun, right? A year later, I won a boy elf on the shelf from a drawing on Facebook while we lived on Tinker AFB in Oklahoma. Now we have two elves and Mary is six or seven. I got tired of having to remind my kids that the magic will be lost should they keep touching the elves. So I just told them that it's only if my kids are mean to each other. 
Then my two younger children started carrying the elves around with them all the time and started sleeping with the elves. One time, Mary took the boy elf with us to a store off base. We lived on the Air Force base, and she dropped him. This was like two weeks before Christmas. When she dropped him, my son saw a lady grab the elf and run away with him. This broke my daughter's heart for four days. One morning, the boy elf was back at our house in new clothes with cookies and a note that basically said he was sorry he ran off and wouldn't do it again. At first, I thought one of my friends got us a new one. However, they all swore up and down they didn't. Well, shit, you need a special ID to get on base. So how did the elf come back to our house? The fuck? Well, here is the creepy shit. One night, Mary was sleeping with the boy elf when she raced into my bedroom in a panic. She was crying and said, I don't like the elf anymore. Please take it away. It's evil. My husband tried to make her feel better, saying it was just a dream. But Mary said, no, it's bad. I was looking at him and his eyes changed to red upside down triangles and gave me an angry face. Her little heart was beating faster than a jackrabbit's. I felt so bad for her. What did I do? I calmed her down and I said, we can get rid of him. I went to her room and took that elf and walked him down the stairs with Mary following behind me. I took one of those big goldfish cracker containers, the ones that look like milk cartons, and stuffed him in there. Then I took a stapler and stapled all across the opening until it was stapled shut. Was that enough? Fuck no! I then took that container containing the elf and took it to the outside storage shed and put it in another Tupperware container that latched shut. Was that enough? Hell no. I then locked the storage shed and it stayed in there till trash day. I told Mary he shouldn't be able to get out of there. If you want, you and I can just sleep on the couch tonight. And we did. When trash day came, Mary and I put that container in the trash can and watched as the garbage truck dumped that evil elf in the container in the back of it and smashed it up. After that, no more issues. Not sure if it was really haunted or what, but I listen to my kids no matter how ridiculous it may be. If I wouldn't want to deal with it, why try to make them, you know? Why make them feel worse if a simple thing like the two of us locking up a creepy elf for the night can help her calm down and feel better? We now do Christmas critters instead. I let my two youngest pick out two small stuffed animals, and those are now the Christmas critters. Nothing has happened since then. Tiffany. Oh, Christmas critters is the way to go. I love Christmas critters. Red triangle upside down eyes and being like, I'll kill you. (laughs) Throw it away. Who was this woman that snatched an elf that she had to have seen fallen from a child's small hand onto the floor and then just took off with it? (laughs) Be like, who did that? Merry Christmas. Bye. (laughs) They ran off with it. That is wild. That is wild. Has anybody heard from her? Perhaps. Crystal, or I guess it wasn't Crystal. We don't know what the boy one was named. But yeah. perhaps that woman met an untimely death and he got himself <laughs> back to old <laughs> Tiffany's house on his own. The elf's like, I'll do anything to go home. <laughs> and it just he had to change killed. clothes because his was covered in blood. <laughs> uh, it's like, this elf looks like it's been washed. What is on it? It's all stained. <laughs> yeah, that is, it's eerie as fuck to have the thing just show up. But to have the kid in the night just be like, take something that they once loved. I imagine as a parent, that is a stomach drop moment. Because it's like, you love this stuffy. You want to sleep with it every night. And it's like, it's evil. Get rid of it. And, you know, props to Tiffany for being like, yes, ma'am, we will do that. Let's we do will it. put that bitch in a goldfish container. I got shut. one of those goldfish containers in my pantry right now. I know exactly what you're talking about. They're Perfect a family size. favorite over here. So I'm glad to know. If Chippy, who is our elf, yeah, goes rogue, that I got security system in place. I got a stapler. I got a goldfish container. I'll put that bitch in the trash, and we'll never see her again if she does no. something like this. It's giving um, drop dead Fred vibes, where she stuffs him in the <laughs> jack in the box and tapes him shut. Mm-hmm. You got to tape, get rid of it. Like in, in like Tiffany said, if the kid is like this thing is cursed, be like, don't. What kind of parents like? No, it isn't. Sleep with it. <laughs> You're fine. It's like, yeah, right. I guess it is cursed. Fuck it. Let's get it out of this house just in case. 
I can't say it's not. I wasn't there. Mm -mm. So, yeah, I I agree. If it's, you know, if it's going to help them and it doesn't hurt anything else, just play along with it, you know? Better safe than sorry. And I do like telling, instead of if you touch the elf, it loses magic. If you're mean to each other, it loses its magic. Yeah, we've had a couple of instances where, you know, one of them, Ella doesn't touch it, but Simon, we got to put her up high or he, you know, he'll just run off with it and flush it down the toilet. That's his thing. (laughs) He has ruined many earbuds over the past six months by just (sighs) throwing them into random bodies of water. (laughs) But it's so fun. The toilet. Whatever. Just, you watch it just like spin down. What a satisfying <laughs> thing. If you, if you're a two or three and you have no consequences to your actions, I bet it's great fun to flush things down the toilet. For the <laughs> uh, rest of us, there's not consequences horrible. for there's these actions. actions. <laughs> there's horrible consequences, but when you're three, it's just you and the bowl. And just yeah. in that moment, what a feeling. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess you know, if the if chippy starts making eyes or anything, you're like, give her to Simon. He'll know what to do. <laughs> They're like, what happened to Chippy? I don't know. Simon uh, just keeps saying she's been dealt with and won't tell us anything else. <laughs> he closed the bathroom door and his little tiny hands just went doot, doot, like he brushed them. Like he was like, all done. <laughs> like Mr. Wolf on Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tiffany, I'm glad that um, you got rid of the evil one. You get Crystal was the way to go. Yes. Stick and with Crystal. Christmas critters, though, you got to trademark that because somebody is going to come along. And just like they did with this elf on the shelf, it becomes the biggest mass marketing consumerism scam that parents have ever been handed. My God, the fucking thing that this elf, they, it's got little tiny uh, cooking things you can buy for it. There's all sorts of your branded elf on the shelf that suck shit. The elf on the shelf, elf on the shelf cereal. Maybe the worst cereal I've ever tasted in my life. It is horrid <laughs> to the point where I'm like, I can't give this to you. This is just sugar. It's so awful. If you've been harmed by Elf on the Shelf, you may be titled, <laughs> entitled to compensation. This sounds like is you got because you're always kind of like, you know, we don't really need to do that. But then you're like, oh, we'll just do it a little bit. And it's just like any of this stuff. They suck you in and mm-hmm. they manipulate your children against you because they put that <laughs> thing in the cartoon where it's like, look what your mommy and daddy can go and buy you right mm-hmm. now. And then all of a sudden you got kids being like, Wow, that looks cool. It's like, you motherfucker elf on the shelf. <laughs> wow. Well, I wish Chippy had left me that reindeer. I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for one. They're sold yeah. out. Okay. <laughs> Chippy is under a lot of stress this holiday season. <laughs> like, Ch- by the way, Chippy's not getting you that. It's me. Okay. I had to go to six <laughs> targets. Do you know what this is? Like? <laughs> then you, your yeah. borderline become the dad on Scrooge. She's like, that's a really nice cut of meat. It's an $18 <laughs> cut of veal. Why are you complaining, kid? And it's like, I want to chew you <laughs> oh i've decided to just lean in i was like yeah. last night i said maybe we just go super hard and we just really make this like a big production the elf? i don't remember what we did oh last night we did this one that i've told you i was like babe i've joined a facebook group he goes oh i've joined one too and i was like what are we in the same elf on the shelf <laughs> facebook group and we don't know it posting anonymously so i'm not judged so my husband is <laughs> and it's like wait a minute oh we did the one last night where she's in a stack of a roll of toilet paper stacked on top of each other that is uh tommy drew a little snowman face you know so she's like oh, that's poking cute. Out of a toilet paper snowman so Fun. that was last night's we gotta we'll see what tonight says i got some ideas i have some screenshots people go hard hard have you done where it's a bowl of water with two googly eyes and a carrot in it and it says i tried to make you a snowman inside but it melted and i was like that's an easy elf on the shelf because it's oh, a melted a snowman one. it's really just a bowl of water but the googly eyes and the carrot nose is very cute okay i might have to do that it, it seems like it one where that. cheerios are made into elf donuts which is basically cute. you just get cheerios and put little sprinkles on them there's some other things a lot of them and if this is how you run your elf on the shelf, props to you. But so many of them are doing stuff with shit. Like, like doo-doo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're always shitting out Hershey Kisses. Or they're in the bathroom and there's chocolate smeared all over toilet paper. I've seen I've seen a lot of things on the internet. It sounds like elf on the shelf's a fecophiliac. 
<laughs> what is this? Some parents go hard. Tell me, They're like, me this we, Every family's different, but we love scat play with our elf. <laughs> so it's your different. Every family's different. We're just a scat type of family. <laughs> oh, Tommy sent me this TikTok where this it just escalates, and this guy's like, "Yeah, I'm good. Oh, oh, I'm gonna go uh, buzz some of his hair off right now. You know, the elf did it. It's funny, and like parents will do like wild stuff and blame it on the elf. I saw one where this kid's just like covered in makeup, good. and then the elf is sitting there with like a makeup palette and a little brush. I'm like, damn. First of all, how you got this on your kid without them waking up? Kudos to you. They're a deep sleeper. Our our elf isn't quite as mischievous. She's a little more just fun, doing cutesy stuff. But Somebody, as the kids age, so does Chippy. Or maybe <laughs> she's eternal. Like a vampire. She's eternal. She doesn't age. <laughs> well, somebody posted a video of little kids sleeping, and it was definitely the mom, but they later on said it was the elf, and was cutting holes in all their pajamas and cutting a lock of their hair. And then the kids woke up and were like, my pajamas are ruined. And they're like, it's that wacky elf. And I was like, that's like sorority fraternity <laughs> hazing. Like, this is right? getting, like, that's against on-campus policies at almost all universities, and you're doing you it to your kid in your own. your kid's hair? Yeah. And then what are you going to do with that? Yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to... uh uh, scare my kids into thinking some tiny little thing with scissors is running around its head in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's coming that's at not, you. That's not how I run Chippy, but you know, Chippy would never. Other elves may. Other elves are all in the scat play and cutting, but not Chippy. <laughs> <laughs> she got uh, stuck in the TV the other day. Oh, that's, that's an fun. easy one too. If you're a parent out there, you just go to YouTube and they have like a 10 hour play of you can choose the elf, and then it just says. Help! I tried to watch TV and press the wrong button. I don't know how to get out of here. Nice. And so, yeah. That's and then solid. Ella goes, "You put Chippy on the TV <laughs> to Tommy," and he goes, "Is that what you believe?" And she was like, "No." And he goes, "Do you think Santa flies around?" And she's like, "Yes." <laughs> he goes, "Well, then I guess Chippy got herself stuck in the TV." <laughs> <laughs> we play into it. Yeah, it's fun to it's play like, with the magic. She knows it's not real, but she wants it to be real so bad that I think she's kind of convinced herself it is real. So now I'm just like, whatever. Chippy is uh, Chippy is one of us. She Chippy is. Wallace Brown. She's a member of the family now. Member of the family. Mm-hmm. Sinisterhood will be right back. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Let me just tell you what I've been doing with BetterHelp. I would get a Monday morning appointment with my therapist and I can't live without it now. And it's the best thing that I've ever done, especially in the going into this holiday season because mm-hmm. it's stressful. I got some family members. We do gifts. Other ones we do, uh, you know, I get one little gift for everybody and all these kind of things of I should be doing and am I failing and is this wrong? It's a great thing to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that you have a standing appointment. What a great yes. way to to start your week off too. Absolutely. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. And like you said, starting off my week, I love to do that because I can kind of recap what I did the week before. And I really feel like it has set me in motion. And having that weekly standing appointment that I've chosen to make for myself, it's like a gift to myself. It honestly gives me something to look forward to and think, oh, I can do this, accomplish this, whatever, and then talk about it next Monday. So it's been a wonderful gift to me. I love it. We have to give ourselves gifts just as much as other people. We got to take care of ourselves. Self-love. Absolutely. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Sinister today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Sinister. Well, this next one is from Amber, and it is called That Time Santa Flew Over My House. Hey, y'all. I was listening to Freaky Friday on my way to work this morning, and one of those stories triggered a memory for me that is still a mystery years later. One Christmas Eve, my husband and I had put our kids to bed and were watching a movie while we waited for it to be late enough for Santa to come. 
We'd split up the cookies and I was happily drinking Santa's cocoa when suddenly a tiny voice that would not have been out of place in the long hallway of a haunted hotel whispered, Mommy, in my ear. I jumped off the couch and screamed, dousing my husband in the couch with hot chocolate. My lizard brain quickly caught up with the rest of the gray matter and realized my youngest had slipped out of bed and was standing behind the couch. She was my child who never slept, so this was just a special Christmas episode of a weekly show. I scooped her up and decided to put her in our bed so that when she inevitably got up in the middle of the night, we'd know. We lay there all snugly and warm, but she kept fighting sleep. After a while, I asked her if everything was okay. And that was when the tears started. She told me she didn't think Santa was coming because she was a bad kid. I had no idea why she thought she was a bad kid, but it wasn't the first time she had said it recently. I worried it was a bully at school, and I was ready to find a six-year-old and shove a lump of coal where the sun don't shine. We found out later it was her teacher who was making her life hell. I had to remind myself I don't look good in orange when we found this out. I rubbed her back, assured her that she was a wonderful kid, and told her there would be presents for her under the tree in the morning. After a few minutes, she seemed to have fallen asleep, but I continued to lay there with her since she had fooled me before. I dozed off and was awakened by the sound of sleigh bells outside my bedroom window, my second floor bedroom window. I started to get out of bed, and when my daughter realized I was awake, she sleepily said, Did you hear that, Mommy? It was Santa. I was stunned. I was sure I had been asleep and dreaming, but she heard them too. I tucked her in and went to investigate how in the hell sleigh bells just flew over my house. Her brother sometimes fell asleep with the radio on. Maybe we heard a commercial. No radio, sleeping boy. Next, I thought we somehow heard something my husband was watching. Nope. He had turned off the TV when I didn't come back and had been cleaning up the hot chocolate carnage. My window overlooked the backyard, so I checked there. Nada. Puzzled and tired, I went back in to help my husband. I turned things over in my mind while we put out gifts and hung stockings, but I couldn't think of a single thing that would have sounded like sleigh bells outside my window. Tonight, I asked my now adult daughter if she remembered that Christmas Eve. She did and said she thought it was Santa when she was little, but now she realizes it was probably just her brother's radio. When I told her I had checked that and it wasn't, she shrugged. I can't believe she's not curious. So what happened that night? Did we somehow share a dream? Was a neighbor up to holly jolly mischief? Did the universe decide to send peace of mind to a sad little girl on Christmas Eve? Your guess is as good as mine. Happy holidays, Amber. Oh, I'm so happy she heard that jingle jangle. She needed that when she was feeling down like Fuck a naughty teacher kid. that <laughs> told this sweet little angel she was a bad kid. This is one reason that I can be anti Santa at times because I worry that kids think like, you know, really do get upset. Like, mm-hmm. well, if I'm bad, I'm not going to get any presents. So I don't like to equate good or bad with santa doing stuff it's just Mm -hmm. santa does stuff and it has nothing to do with with what you're doing (laughs) don't take it he's got his own agenda (laughs) (laughs) i saw a whole long list though in my in the one of the mesquite facebook pages actually and people were like do you do most presents from santa or just one and that way all kids you know if they go to school and they're like santa gave me an xbox and it's like santa gave me socks and underwear well he probably hates you you know trying to figure out ways to like everybody Santa didn't come to my house yeah it is it is a those are questions we all have to ask ourselves as parents right well but it's very sweet that she heard this jingle jangle either it was i mean there's only two logical explanations i think it was either santa or (laughs) like a like a cowboy and some spurs walking by (laughs) the jingle of his boots (laughs) probably just a cowboy Boy walking by with some spurs in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve. Why not both? And it's a cowboy Santa in his Ooh, spurs and boots. There you go. I do have that book, The Texas Night Before Christmas, and it uh, Santa's wearing boots in it. So y'all might have just got visited by the Texas Santa. <laughs> I have that too. Twas the night before Christmas in Texas, and it's yeah. clearly a plug and play of 
whatever yeah, yeah, city yeah. you live in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's yeah, fun. I love well, this sweet dream. Whether it was a shared yeah. dream or a, a commercial or your neighbor, you know, somebody dressed up at your neighbor's house or something like that. Sometimes we get that message we need when we need it. It the made most. her feel better, so that's all that matters. Well, thank you, Amber. This next one's from Gina, and the subject line is Black Eyed Kids or Elf. Hi, Heather and Christy. I've been a listener since 2020, and I've seen you twice when you came to Detroit. You're one of my favorite podcasts and a part of my weekly routine that helped the week go by in a positive way. So thank you for what you do, and I hope you enjoy my Freaky Friday submission. So I'm a Catholic Albanian, and part of our traditions is to celebrate Saints' feast days. Different families have different saints that they celebrate, and my aunt and her husband's family is St. Nicholas, December 5th and 6th, and it's exactly what it sounds like. We have a feast with family and friends on the eve of the saint's feast where we cook lamb and have lots of different Albanian-type sides and desserts. Back in 2018, just a little over five years ago, my sister and I had headed back home from my aunt's house after celebrating. It was pretty late, and we were getting ready for bed, and part of the routine is taking out my contacts. I'm a pretty blind, nearsighted person. Now, I'm not entirely sure why we had left the front window shades open, but as I was about to close them, I went to go pet my dog, who was on the chair in front of the front window. As I was petting him and giving him all the love, I looked up at the window and saw the shape of a little girl peeking out from the side of our window. Now, remember, I'm blind, especially if something is more than four to six inches away from my face. I can see big shapes, but not details. I screamed for my sister, who was in the hallway, which can see out through the front window, and said, Did you see that? There was a little girl outside the window. Now, as fast as she was there, she was gone. But my sister did see her. She confirmed what I saw, which was a little girl with brown hair, couldn't have been more than six or seven years old based on how small she was. My sister was just as freaked out because she thought she was imagining things because she also took her contacts out, but she's not as blind as me. But we both saw it and knew we were not imagining any of it. As soon as we stopped freaking out, we called my parents and then the police to come and look around. Because if it was an actual little girl, why is she out by herself past midnight in December? Now, along with these Albanian traditions, there's also the tradition that I know other cultures have when it comes to St. Nicholas, which is leaving shoes outside for some candy or little presents. And even as adults, my sister and I still did that while living with my parents. And we had that night once we came home. So maybe it was an elf or a little helper or maybe more sinister, like a black eyed kid. I'll never know. The police didn't find anyone outside either, and no one believed our story in our family. I don't care, though. I'm not one to make up stories, and I'm definitely skeptical when it comes to supernatural occurrences. But I was also raised Catholic, so I have the fear of the supernatural in me always, especially if it's demonic. Anyway, that's my story. Tell me what you think. I hope all of you have a happy holidays. Gina. Well, it was probably a... Little kid in spurs out there <laughs> walking no down answer. the street. Just there's no Same other answer. little partner. <laughs> really a black eyed elf. Yeah. I mean, who's to say they, you know, maybe they, they got sizes. those in their world too. <laughs> yeah, they come in all sizes. That's eerie though. My thing is, is you saw it, your sister saw it, and then also you were afraid enough to call the police. I would hope that it, you weren't just like, hey, we saw an elf outside. It's like, there might be a kid in danger. Like, that's a good thing to be like, she needs help to so someone come and get her. Yeah, and if it is a black yeah. eyed kid, good luck, officer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, those officers, I think, are going to be in for a rude awakening. Yeah. I like though that. We got a little glimpse into uh, how other cultures celebrate Christmas and and do the St. Nicholas stuff. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I love that, Gina. Well, we hope you had a wonderful St. Nicholas feast this year. And uh, I, I'm in for some lamb and some Albanian side dishes and dessert Fuck anytime. Yeah. That sounds awesome. But mm -hmm. happy, uh, ha a belated happy St. Nicholas feast day and a happy holidays to you, Gina. Thanks. Sinisterhood will be right back. Well, this last one is from Amber, and the subject line is a British ghost story. Hi, ladies. I've been wanting to write this in for some time now, but I have both dyslexia and ADHD and find it challenging to write down what's in my head. I'm also a perfectionist, so I wanted to get this right before sending it across because it's one hell of a story. 
This all started in 2014 when, after some time doing long distance, I visited my then-boyfriend, now husband, in the UK. Having grown up in sunny Australia, I was excited to experience the cold, cozy winter of England and visit some historic sites. Being based in UK, my boyfriend didn't have as long a holiday over the winter, Australian summer, as I did, and so we spent a fair amount of time at my stay there at his student house in Exeter. The house in question was a very classic UK student property, run down with sticky carpets and an oddly placed second bathroom on the other side of the kitchen. My boyfriend's bedroom was located on the first floor, and as far as student rooms go, was relatively large. One cold night before Christmas, I woke up around 3 a.m. to see a figure standing next to the side of my bed. They were tall and thin, wearing a brown hooded cloak, and were what I can best describe as decaying. Their long, outstretched skeletal hands reached out from the arms of the cloak towards me. Their pale face was nothing more than a skull shadowed by the cloak's hood. Despite them being nothing more than a skeleton with some stringy gray tissue— I knew this figure was a man, and that in that split second of me surveying him, I remember thinking how strange it was that moonlight was reflecting off his bones. I sat bolt upright and screamed loud enough to wake the whole house up, and likely the street. This was not a quick, short scream, either. It felt like I screamed and screamed for ages as this figure continued to glide towards me. Even after my boyfriend made it across the room to turn the lights on, the figure was still there and it took several moments before he faded into nothing. Similar to how the moonlight had a reflection on him in the dark, the bedroom light had changed his shadow when the light was on. Crying and shaking, I told my boyfriend, and by this point his housemates, what I had seen. Some of them were a bit freaked out, but collectively they reassured me that I was probably only dreaming and experiencing something like sleep paralysis. I've had sleep paralysis before, but this felt different. I wasn't paralyzed, for starters, and had never had it where the thing remained after the lights were turned on. Eventually, I calmed down enough to go back to sleep. The next morning, I woke up feeling a bit embarrassed, but still generally pretty shocked by what I had seen. My boyfriend teased me, and I expected his housemates to do the same, but largely, they were just freaked out at having been woken in the middle of the night to what sounded like a murder. Fast forward to that night, and I go to bed settled with the fact that it had all just been a dream. However, 3 a.m. rolls around, and I'm woken by my boyfriend sitting upright in bed, pointing to where, the night before, I had seen my figure, and screaming, Get out! Get out! Get the fuck out! At this point, I'm freaked out and immediately respond with, What's there? What can you see? To which he calmly stops, lies back down, and says, What are you talking about? The man had been yelling, y'all, and was now lying there like I had just woken him up. Like, what the actual fuck? I got up and turned on the light because, sorry, no, I am not letting this go, and said, do you know what you just did? To which he has no recollection, despite him now being firmly awake. It's safe to say that I did not go back to sleep that night because, despite this ordeal being significantly less scarier than the night before, It made me feel all the more justified in that what I had seen the night prior was more real. Time goes by, Christmas passes, and we're now into January 2015. The creepiness of the year prior feeling like a not-so-distant spooky memory. That was until the last of my experiences happened in that house, again in the same room on the same side of the bed. I had gone to sleep after a relatively uneventful day and woke at some point in the night to what felt like beads, yes, beads, stuck in my throat. I vividly remember putting my hands to my mouth and pulling out this string of brownish red beads. I could feel as each bead left my throat and remember being annoyed that they were never ending. I wasn't panicked despite struggling to breathe and slowly walked to the bedroom door to turn the light on. My boyfriend asked what I was doing, to which I answered with the oblivious, I'm trying to get these beads out of my throat. And again, even with the light on, I could see these beads in my hands before, eventually, they faded into nothing. We chatted for a moment, he reassured me that I was dreaming, and we turned off the light and went back to bed. I remember lying there, still feeling these beads, being frustrated that I had now lost the end and could no longer pull them out. A couple of days later, I'm telling this to one of his housemates as we walk back from a night out. 
It was misty and spooky, and as we were reminiscing about the year before when I had seen the cloaked figure next to my bed, it was misty and spooky, and we were reminiscing about the year before when I had seen the cloaked figure next to my bed. As I was describing these beads to her, talking about their size and the fact they were made of wood and looked like they were painted in a faded red, she stopped me and said, Do you think they were the monks? The monks? I asked. You know, the monk you saw, she said. Do you think they were his rosary beads? It's been nearly 10 years since I had this experience, and I think of it pretty regularly. I've tried searching the area, and despite being able to find reference to friaries in Exeter, I can't pinpoint the street to any specific event or historic structure. I hope this makes it to the podcast, but even if it doesn't, I'm happy to have finally written it down. Yikes on bikes. Oh, Amber, that was a monk in the night. <laughs> She got monks. You got monks. You then got monks. It ain't Tony Shalhoub either. It was a <laughs> ghoulish old timey monk being like, choke on them. But what kind of like you in London asleep in the foggy Christmas time and then a ghost of Christmas whatever is like, yeah. oh, <laughs> God damn, girl, you survived. Ooh, that's mm -mm. chilling. That's chilling. But then your boyfriend also has an experience. Yes, sees it too. And then you're choking on the beads. I sees think something, doesn't remember it. So you're like, what? Ah, what's happening? I'm glad it's like student property because that means you get to move out with like, you know, it's not like, <laughs> well, I inherited this house, so I have to keep it. You know, it's like, all right, semester's up. See you later, monks. Sorry. Bye. -bye. <laughs> oh, I like Lord. that you took the time to see if maybe there was a monastery or something yeah. around, you know, do a little more digging. Maybe there's... Something going on. Maybe Never someone know. listening might know in Exeter if there's – if you have been visited by a ghastly <laughs> monk in Exeter, let us know. And we'll please. get you in contact with Amber. <laughs> yeah, please write to us uh, so we can connect you. But thank you, Amber, for sending in that chilly Christmas tale. And it goes nicely with our episode that we put out this week of – Mostly Victorian ghost stories, oh, but, but a bit of our own as well. Yeah, that fits right in. Sinisterhood will be right back. Well, our last two tales come to you from Kristen Caruso and Brandy Pond, the intimidable hosts of Let's Go to Court. We had a ton of fun talking with these two. They've been friends since fifth grade. It shows. They're so very close and, you know, just bounce right off of each other. Kristen did one semester of law school. Brandy did a semester of criminal justice. So, I mean, that makes sense. You're going to start a true crime podcast. Yeah. Together, they uh, they tackle a, a different topic each week. They started the show back in 2018 after they saw My Favorite Murder live show, and they have just been keeping us laughing. Everybody that listens to them always says, you know, you're you're in for it because they're going to tell you a tale that you haven't probably heard of before with all the details and then all of their charm and, uh, and Brandy's beautiful laugh, which we got oh, to yes. experience firsthand. So we hope you all enjoy it. Yes, we had so much fun and we hope you enjoy and have just as much fun listening to it as we did talking with them. Hello and welcome to another edition of Freaky Friday Guest Story Segment. And this week, drop what you're doing. Stop it's what happened. you're doing. The, the time happened. is now. <laughs> you all created a petition for today to happen. And you know what? You didn't even have to do that because we were already in the works. The petition <laughs> was very lovely. We we're like, listen, we just, we kept having to reschedule. Shit has gone down, but now the shit is done and the people are here. Those who you have been waiting for us to talk to, Kristen and Brandy from Let's Go to Court. Yay! Hello, <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> oh, so excited to be with you all today. Thank you so much for joining us on this yes, freakiest thank of Fridays. You for having because us. you're here. Yeah, Every time anybody us. mentions you, they're like, you all would love each other. And yeah. you know what, folks? Y'all yes. are right. We do. All right. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I feel like we would be friends in real life. Like, yes, for yeah. sure. we, I think Absolutely. we already are. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Once already you meet in real life, even if it's via the internet, yeah. you're still friends. Yeah. I mean, even if you're not. I guess you can be friends. I have a friend that has been best friends with someone that they have never met in real life for decades. Internet they only, only wow. know each other through the internet. Yeah. So wow. if they ever met, 
It would be ruined because it's a catfish. No, I'm kidding. Right. I was going to say, <laughs> it's for sure a catfish. Uh, yeah, but the person not- doesn't really exist. They've been talking to a bot <laughs> this whole time. Their webcam is always broken. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Like, it's, just, it's just out of focus. It's just blurry. It's blurry. But you all are real friends because you all have been best friends for a long time. How did you meet? We met in the fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, just by uh, – we were ended up in the same class and we got seated next to each other because our last names both started with P. And oh. so, yeah, we were forced to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, making friends is hard. So we just decided to just, like, yeah, be friends for the rest of up. our lives. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no. You get <laughs> one good one and you're That's like, right. I'm good. I'm yeah. good to yeah. life now. Yeah. I'm square. Right. I'm square. It's, it's exhausting cool. to try exactly. and foster other relationships. That's right. Who has the time for that? <laughs> well, that's the, the magic of a podcast is now everybody feels like they're your third best friend. How does uh-huh. that feel? Of what's like the response you've gotten for, you know, do, putting yourself out there, making a podcast? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing we hear the most often is like, it feels like we're like, they're the third best friend hanging out with mm-hmm. us. And yeah, our our uh, podcast is very conversational, very tangent filled. And so it really is just like us having a conversation every week and like people listening in. <laughs> That's how we, Heather and I have always wanted ours to sound too. Like you're just kind of, we're all sitting around just talking and telling stories. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we're sharing for that sure. story. Well, for those who don't know and have been living under a rock, give a little <laughs> summary breakdown of Let's Go to Court. How how did the podcast start and what do you all do each week? Okay. So um, Brandy and I have a lot of expertise in the field. I don't mean to brag. I, um, I'm a law school dropout. She's a Shout criminal out. justice dropout. So we each yeah. did one semester and decided that was more than enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we discovered that basically we don't really want to go to school for this topic, but we do love talking about big, juicy legal battles And so that's what we do. We've started trading off. So I'll tell a story one week. She'll tell a story another week. And um, we're drawn to different things. Brandy likes the really sick shit. So (laughs) that's what you're into. (laughs) I cover the very traditional true crime stories. Typically, that's Mm -hmm. my jam. And yeah, Kristen, Kristen brings us the fire with like the wildest like civil suits you've heard of, like corporate Mm. lawsuits, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I, I like that you get a mix of both, though. And Heather, absolutely. also, you fucked up by becoming an attorney because you could have just gone for a semester <laughs> and dropped out and still done. What exactly, you're doing. Jay is ringing my, just calling me off the hook, and I could have skipped all of that and still been like, we're both, we're all here. So yeah, that's right. we're all here. <laughs> Very stupid. Only one of us is hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. <laughs> yes, exactly. Everybody else is like, oh, I have a podcast too. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. <laughs> uh, no, but that's awesome, and that's what. I, I do love the gamut. Like you all cover all different kinds of cases because I tuned into one which on its surface looked like it could be, I won't say lighthearted, a disaster is never, but maybe a, a more civilly – it wasn't a civil case. It was a disaster at Six Flags Great America. Oh, was, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I'm a, I am love theme park behind mm-hmm. the scenes stuff. So that mm-hmm. was extremely fascinating. But I see what you mean of like that's that might not be something that would necessarily get covered on a standard true crime podcast. But right. it is something to cover. And I appreciate you discussing, OK, here's the safety issues that happened. And I think that that's something that people have mentioned about you all is that the cases you cover, you usually try to do it with a thoughtful or a just minded type of lens is that in factor into your selection of topics heather what i hear you saying is that we are doing the lord's work (laughs) and you're absolutely (laughs) right (laughs) and we do it exactly perfect every time (laughs) no that's definitely that's definitely um we like yeah we pick stories that have you know uh important messages behind them a lot of times have made um legal precedent stuff like that but also um also, just really bad, gruesome murder sometimes, too. There's yeah. no shortage of No them, shortage, absolutely. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Theme park stuff, did y- y'all see Class Action Park? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You watch yes. that? Yeah. yeah. Good There's grief. a lot of shit that goes on at theme parks. So I, much. I, well, I also, told Heather, like, I was, my mother, like, was a staunch advocate for not letting me go on, like, carnival rides. That's right. Yeah. Up. I, and, and, I thank her every day because Absolutely. like 
You're just one <laughs> twirly still alive. away from getting yeah. yeeted across into a fucking oh my, cotton cage. Have you, have you seen the footage? This just happened recently of one of those like octopus things at a carnival. Oh. And then like one of the cars just disconnected and just like flew mm-hmm. off into the crowd. Like, no. yeah. Oh, never God. get I'm on a carnival like, ride ever, ever. We no. are like the turn of an Alan wrench away from <laughs> yeah. the destruction anytime yeah, exactly. we go. Like, it's yeah. so close. Like, legitimate amusement parks are barely regulated carnival rides not at all no. like never was... never get on one ever <laughs> it's so fascinating to hear about the lack of regulation and something mm-hmm. like i don't know a roller coaster yes and to be like well there are minimum standards that you can adhere to and it's like yeah. oh no no i would no, like no, no. Be fines and arrests <laughs> somebody should be like <laughs> checking on those things regularly yes. <laughs> yeah yeah oh they i think never they do. let just about anybody put up a carnival ride i, I think I so probably Go down there and put Just one up. Got and, the IKEA yeah, steps. Got a couple of tools. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if the podcast goes not sideways, a lot of checks and balances. <laughs> yeah, I gotta no. pay the student loans somehow. Y'all are gonna see me at the carnival? Like, yeah, yeah, get on the tilt the world. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. uh, and then you can represent yourself in court. Exactly. Brilliant. Exactly. Something <laughs> does go down. I will keep. I'll, I'll keep uh, that in mind. No, I'm gonna. I'll call y'all because uh, things have gone bad. If I'm working, if I'm the one putting a carnival ride together, <laughs> do not get on it. <laughs> That's a true horror story, but. But uh, I actually hear that you have some horror stories you want to tell us today, including one that might resonate a little bit with one oh, of us. Yeah. So yeah. who wants to go first? Y'all, uh-huh. we'll leave it up to y'all. Uh, I'll go first. Yeah. Right, you go first. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I'm going to talk about my brush with true crime okay, or right. the time I survived a home invasion and didn't realize it. <laughs> oh. So, um... Travel back in time with me, if you will, to a sunny but cold Saturday afternoon in the winter of, I don't know, approximately 2010, give or take five years, because what is time? I have Uh no idea. (laughs) Um, On this particular day, I had gotten off work early. I'm a hairstylist by trade. And so, like, there is nothing better than getting off work early on a fucking Mm. Saturday. Like, the best thing ever. It's like Ferris Bueller. You're, like, ready to launch a car. Exactly. Exactly. So... I came home a couple earlier or a couple hours earlier than I had planned. And um okay, so my ex husband, he was my husband at the time, but we're gonna call him my ex husband throughout the course of this story because That's we, fair. You get mm-hmm. that nicest word <laughs> and helping you out. So he probably would appreciate that. You're like my husband before the husband that I have right now. Okay. So my <laughs> my um ex husband wasn't home. Yet. husband. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um that meant that I had an afternoon of the TV to myself. Oh, yes. Who knows what I watched? I can't – I have no idea. Probably – I mean, let's be honest. I probably watched Snapped. Like, legitimately, yeah. that's probably yeah, what I came right. from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there I am just curled up on my living room couch, minding my business, probably playing Candy Crush on my phone as well, if I'm being honest. Nice. Um, and uh, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. It was still light outside, but the sun had started to set. And I heard a noise that kind of drew my attention to the front door. As my eyes kind of fixed on the doorknob of the front door, I noticed that it turned slightly. Uh-huh. I was surprised, um, but obviously my ex-husband had gotten off work early and was home, you know, that kind of thing. And I watched as the knob turned slightly again. But the deadbolt on the door was locked, so the door didn't open. Good. And I sat there on the couch just, like, watching this. um, And I expected my ex-husband to walk through the door, but that's not what happened. Instead, I watched as the shadow of someone walked by the window on the front of my house. And I was no. like, okay. And then the shadow turned the corner and walked by the windows on the side of my house. Oh. oh. Someone was walking around my house. I believe they call it case in the joint. <laughs> it is. <laughs> right, exactly. So for a moment, my brain was like trying to come up with a logical explanation about this. Obviously, it was my ex-husband, but for some reason, his key didn't work in the door. Uh, and so he was walking around the side of the house to come in the garage door. Uh, this didn't make any sense, of course, because like my car was parked in the driveway. Like, no, none of this makes sense. But 
Okay, this is this is what I'm convincing myself, right? You're more concerned with yeah. the snap story absolutely, than your own absolutely. Like, snap story that could <laughs> is <fine>. imminent. <laughs> yeah. So at this point I did like pause what I was watching and I'm like, okay, what like what's happening here? So I'm like, you know, taking stock. All right, any second my ex husband's gonna walk in the door. But then I heard it. The chirp of my security system alerting me that a door oh. had opened. <gasps> Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so from my vantage point on the living room couch, I could see the front door and the door to the garage. Those are the only internal doors that have the alarm sensors on them. So that left only the external garage door, which I couldn't see. And so but like that's what that chirp meant. That door had been opened. And so Mm -hmm. um, I got up, walked across my living room, across my kitchen to the door to my garage, opened it. And uh, there was a man. Standing oh, there no. in my garage. You just came face to face with him? Yeah. Uh, it was not it was not my ex-husband. It was just some random man. And um, <laughs> so did I did I slam the door and call the police? Did I hit the panic button on my alarm? No. no. I didn't do any of those things. Did you ask him politely to leave? Instead I said, <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It's yeah. kind of disarming, though. And he kind of stuff is like, whoa, what? Yeah. Like, can so I get I, you anything? Right. You're very so, Midwestern. This is very friendly yeah. in Midwestern. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm so oh, I, oh, I open the door. I see this man there, and I go, can I help you? <laughs> he goes, he goes, um, I'm Jason. And, like, like, my mind scrambled. I'm like, Jason, Jason? Who the fuck is Jason? Am I supposed to know mm-hmm. who Jason is? And so, but, like... I couldn't find any connection to this man. And so, again, I just said to him, can I help you? <laughs> I will repeat my question, yes. sir. Can I help you? <laughs> I Did didn't he say, I'm Jason, and then this exchange <laughs> just kept going back and forth? It's just a vicious cycle. No, so then he, like, he like takes a step toward me. And uh-uh. at that point, no. I put my hand up on the alarm panel. I have it, like, on the panic button. And he glanced at my hand like he knew what I was doing. And he goes, um, I think I have the wrong house. Oh, you got and the I wrong said, bitch too. You better turn. <laughs> I, said, I said, "Yeah, I think you do." Oh, she but has that, an attitude now. I definitely did not say it that sassy. <laughs> There's not a chance. <laughs> but in the lore of your life, yeah, you did. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, you did. And then him. Jason backed out of my garage, like he stepped back through the door, closed the door, <laughs> and left. And I went back in my house, and I sat down and was like, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> Damn. And I know so what then, just happened. You yeah. saved your life with Midwestern charm. Right? So then a couple of hours went by and my ex-husband came home and I explained to him what had happened. And he was like, why didn't you call the police? And I said, well, I wasn't sure he did anything wrong. <laughs> You're like, to be fair. Politely. He did leave. He yeah. did exactly. That's he what I said. Leave. Like obvi- like I looked at the door and like there was no markings or anything on it. Obviously that door had accidentally been left unlocked. That's yeah. how he'd been able to come in. And so and as soon as I'd confronted him, he left. And so I was like, I'm not sure he did anything wrong. <laughs> but my ex husband was like My ex husband was like, Yeah, we need wrong. to call the police. We have to report this. And I was like, I don't think so. And so then I I <laughs> called my dad, which people who listen to our podcast will like be shocked that this was my take, that I thought my dad was somehow going to be on my side because he would never. He would never oh, really? be. No, no. My dad yeah. is like, report everything. Like, yeah. So I called Call my it dad. Be a patriot. Yeah. Absolutely. So I called my dad and I'm like, I explained the whole thing to him and somehow expected him to be on my side. But he's like. <laughs> What if he was casing your house? And what if he's watching to see if you call the police? And like, mm-hmm. you not calling the police is going to tell him it's okay to come back and do this again when you're not there. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so my dad call. was like, at le- at the very least, call the non-emergency number and make a police mm-hmm. report. Just report that this happened. And so that's what I did. Very begrudgingly, I yeah. called the non-emergency number, explained to the woman who answered the phone what had happened. And she was like, Oh my god, is the man there now? And I was like, like, can I get one motherfucker that agrees with me that this wasn't a big deal? And everyone's like, are you okay? Did you almost die? Because I think you did. 
<laughs> yeah. And so I was like, no, no, no. He's not here. This happened hours ago. And she goes, why didn't you call 911? <laughs> God damn it. And, I was, and so this I said to her again, like. what we call victim blaming. <laughs> exactly. I was like, so I explained right. to her, like, I didn't know for sure if he'd done anything wrong. <laughs> Like that's I love this like thinking the best in people because a hundred percent I would be like but also it maybe he was just trying to go home and it was the wrong house exactly. and it's like no Heather exactly. no look no, at your I life think he and your would have job. immediately called uh, <laughs> Heather one night had a visitor to her back uh, camera on her back porch uh-huh. and um, it was I'll embarrassing her, it was so embarrassing what, ha- what happened <laughs> it was like one in the morning and Christy I was like texting Christy because we just always text all the time and then I was like there's someone in my back port like on my back fence because i had a ring camera and they were kind of trying to steal it because i guess you can just like steal them and resell them oh yeah but his face was like right on it and it's the kind where you can talk to people (laughs) and so i turned it on and like i went what are you doing which is my regular voice and they were like (laughs) he and some whoever he was with started like whispering and talking and i'm like these people are so close to my i mean it's a a thin wooden fence that you could hop over to get to me and so i went babe go get the gun which we don't own and then i in my own voice my husband standing next to me in my own voice went i'm on my way (laughs) (laughs) so the people in the video are like let's leave this lady's looking for herself I don't think they left out of fear. They left out of concern for their own well-being. Of Absolutely. Like, what is happening like, behind these off yeah. doors? Yeah. She's off her rocker that she's like, I'm on my way. Okay, well, she's got a skeleton in there dressed up as her husband that she probably talked to. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it was real Norman Bates vibes. But yeah, that's so funny. Though. I like that the, your reaction, though. That's It was like, yeah. can I help you? Because you're yeah. being kind enough for right Absolutely. Now. So then... The non-emergency, like, they do dispatch a police officer to my house. The police officer comes to make the official report. And he had me walk him through the entire thing that had happened. And then he said, why didn't you call 911 when this happened? You're like, why don't you call 911? Because I'm going to choke you right now. Because you're the last fucking person to ask me this. Exactly. So, again, (laughs) I explained that I wasn't sure he'd done anything wrong. And then the police officer said to me, this is my favorite part. What if he had raped you? Oh my god! <laughs> okay. What? Zero to what? a thousand. Quite a yeah. leap. Well, yeah, sir, quite a that leap. is and, not okay. And like, sir, I think I would have called the police then. Like, yes, that is also, not at all what happened. What a right. um, chaotic victim blaming, yeah. shaming, yes uh, response. I was shocked by it. Shocked. I'm shocked by uh, yes. I didn't, I didn't, I, Yeah, I didn't have words. I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't have words. I know, right? <laughs> so my biggest takeaway from this whole encounter is that eyewitness accounts are so unreliable. As mm. part of my official report, I had to give a detailed description of Jason, height, weight, hair, uh. clothing he was wearing. And when I was asked, suddenly I didn't have a fucking clue. Mm-hmm. How tall was Maybe he? It's because I everyone had been yeah, exactly. you for hours, yeah. and yeah. you're you forgot anything else other than <laughs> no kidding. God, I must be the stupidest person alive. Oh, that I seriously, didn't call yes, no kidding. Dude. Yeah, so they're like, "How tall was he?" I was like, "I don't know, anywhere between five and seven feet." Like, yeah, yeah I'm completely <laughs> sure of absolutely. That's a range. Um, mm-hmm. His hair, I did remember because he had it in one of those like founding father ponytails. Oh, that's like, an the easy real, to remember yeah, thing. real low yeah. ponytail. Can't forget that. Yeah. If you're gonna rob places be more uh less suspicious looking um, of, like i'm just here to sign the declaration of exactly, and steal exactly. Your TV, yeah so. he had a quill in his hand as he broke in <laughs> that's how we knew it was thomas jefferson uh his weight frankly that's none of my business and how dare you even ask like, you're like he looks reasonable it's fine he looks like he can yeah, he's, fine. he's totally fine <laughs> Yeah, all in all, wow. the whole thing turned out to be a, a bit of a nothing burger. I never saw Jason again. And as far as I know, the police never did anything with that official report. Um, what they told me when they took the report was that there was like a sober living house in our neighborhood. And they thought mm. maybe he was trying to go there. Um, but who knows? 
and nothing nothing ever happened and that's my brush with true crime at wow. the time I survived a home invasion. Oh, wow. Well, I love that because when you, I'm glad you got to survive it like pretty unscathed. Yes, absolutely. It, it tells you how you would respond if that happened again. Like someone kicks your door open and right. you're like, can I help you? Yeah, <laughs> can I get you some iced tea? <laughs> oh, you glad thirsty? Was, um, man, I'm glad you're okay, well, but fuck that yes. talk. You <laughs> probably realized somebody was home and decided exactly yeah, exactly like house. exactly so it's good that you opened the door because that's right most, usually people don't want somebody to be home when right. they're robbing somebody so yeah your kindness exactly. prevented uh him from doing anything more sinisterhood we'll be right back The the other thing that I did learn from this incident was just just by him entering my garage without my permission, he had committed burglary. So, oh, he really? Did, he did do something wrong, as it turns out. That's true. So, burglary, not even <laughs> trespassing. But no, they said burglary? it was burglary because he if entered. You, yeah. yeah, he opened it's the like door. It's like different and entered. if it's the yes. doors like cracked, but I think if you make the affirmative yep. <laughs> hand turn and then cross the threshold, especially wow. if you have an intent to commit a felony therein, yeah, then that's when they. Right, See, Heather, this is why you go to all the semesters of law school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> None of us do that. Why you, yeah. This is why you Google things before you get on the air. <laughs> Randy dropped out before they were like, and if anybody ever does come into your house, yeah. call that, the they police. They did do something wrong. You call the police. <laughs> but you know what? Something they never teach you is just be friendly to people because it turned out. I mean, if you were trying Worked to out for him, me, you, de- exactly. you de-escalated it. Like Christy said, he was probably so confused that he was like, oh. not sure that he oh. was. Like, he's <laughs> I didn't block out. Didn't time expect to like, somebody to be there. Yeah, yeah like yeah. That coffee and cookies. Like, <laughs> right. I don't know, but thank you so much. I'm gonna go rob someone else. So I can get just in and out quick. <laughs> oh man, what a oh. tale! Well, I'm glad that you uh, didn't just sit on the couch watching Snapped and wait for him to get into absolutely, your living room. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> man, well, Kristen, uh, I'm very excited to hear your story because I have an inkling. I think I know what it might be about, and I'm very excited. <laughs> I think. Kristen and I have you guys have, have some stuff in common. Yeah, we do yeah. have a bond <laughs> that I'm convinced everyone has, but mm-hmm. just we are normalizing sharing those stories. We're very brave, aren't we, Christy? I so think brave. so. <laughs> I tell myself that every day. I'm like, I'm not ashamed of what I said uh, 250 <laughs> episodes ago. Right? That I thought nobody would hear. Um, right? That's that's l- almost exactly the same thing. I I told this story on our podcast about 200 episodes ago. (laughs) Um, And I got to say, I'm not a competitive person at all. Like to a fault. Like I will ruin a game by not being competitive. (laughs) But (laughs) it's true. And it is like... Yeah. When I found out there was... That's where we don't get along. (laughs) (laughs) Brandy's very competitive. I am not. But when I found out that there was another podcast that people loved and you know someone on there had a story um a harrowing experience in a car um i was like wait a minute that's my story <laughs> and you're like guess what it's everyone's story because it's to all of us. since we had the podcast something similar happened to me and i immediately no. FaceTime, i facetime christy and this is early because i'm very close now all four of us and our husbands are close but at the time i i knew tommy more in a comedy professional way uh-huh. and i'm like telling her so loudly on facetime and then i then i know she was kind of like doing that like looking <laughs> past her phone and i was like is tommy in the room and she's like yeah you're on speaker and he's like hey and, I was like, cool, cool, cool. and that was only two people and both of you have told this two millions of people <laughs> i had a taste I, I don't even know i had a taste <laughs> well Kristen, i am i'm dying to hear how yours compares to mine because we okay. are both survivors yes indeed you and are survivors thank you for letting me bend the rules you know because this oh, story please. does haunt me oh, oh, my absolutely. No, absolutely absolutely a freaky friday story okay okay so starting out with more information than anyone would ever want to know about me <laughs> um is that i until this story i had always been an at-home pooper um <laughs> just <laughs> not a fan of public restrooms found them gross you know if i can avoid it i will all right yeah i get okay. it so um this was way back like 2009, <clears throat> I was living in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and I was dating this guy who lived in New Bern, North Carolina. So it's like a two and a half hour drive. And I would make this drive like once a week to go visit him. And 
I always had this routine that I would go through. When I left New Bern, I would stop by the McDonald's. I would get a small coffee, a large iced tea, and then I'd hit the road. Okay. So this particular time, I got my coffee, got my tea, and I took a sip of my tea, and I thought, huh, that tastes kind of weird. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> Yikes. It tasted... Not good. <laughs> yeah, it tasted kind of like mushroomy. I know that's oh, not a way no. to describe or tea. Like, did it taste like algae-ish or kind of like... Sometimes in Texas, if the water is weird, like the tea will taste weird. It tastes like we used to say it tasted like dirt or like algae. Like it was like mm. like um, something in it. Not quite like that. Mm -hmm. I, I would I've had tea where if it's made in the same thing that coffee was previously made in and they didn't clean it out, then it has that like coffee-ish flavor and it's awful. Yes, I've had that too. That is terrible. This this tea mm -hmm. tasted mushroomy, strange. I knew immediately something was very wrong with this tea. Mm -hmm. But the other thing you have to know about me is that I'm very cheap. And so if I have paid <laughs> money for something, yeah. I must consume it. These are the laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving down the road and I'm like, God, this tea is terrible. <laughs> Sip. <laughs> Sip. <laughs> oh, it tastes like garbage. It's awful. <laughs> And like, you know, I, I drove about an hour mm -hmm. and it felt pretty fine. But then mm -hmm. my stomach started making real weird noises. Uh -oh. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. the you warning know, signs. well, this isn't happening is what I told myself. <laughs> so I just ignored it and the, it went away. My stomach Try stopped well it away. Yeah, yeah I can do it for a while. Yeah. Now, may I ask, where sure. was the other time that you had tasted that? That um, flavor. Years, or is that a reveal coming later? It's not really a reveal. It's just okay. that I had this experience and then, and I could never explain how this tea tasted exactly. But then 10 years later, I was at a sketchy carnival type place and I hey. tasted the tea and I was like, absolutely that not. Out immediately. Oh, yep. okay. like, mm -hmm. I know what this is. Yeah. And it's the boo boo juice <laughs> and I'm not drinking it. I'm not <laughs> falling for it this time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I had ignored. Uh, the grumbles and they went away. <laughs> so I thought mm -hmm. I was fine. Mm -hmm. But then they came back. <sighs> With and a vengeance. <laughs> and then I started to get like stabby <clears throat> pains Oof. in my stomach. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh my God. I might have to poop in a public restroom. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh dear gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If only that was the worst thing. <laughs> That's, yeah, you thought that was the worst thing they could have. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it really felt horrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I thought for a while about like, maybe I can just make it all the way home. But I knew because of this route that I was always on, at about an hour before I would get home, there was a gas station. And then mm -hmm. after that, there was really nothing. So it was do or die time. I needed to stop at this gas station, do my business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of wrapped my head around like, oh my God, I'm going to have to use a public restroom for number two. I'm too good <laughs> this for this. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I go into this gas station and my memory is that I kind of scanned the perimeter looking for the sign that says restrooms. Didn't see it. Mm. And, but there were like three older men up at the, at the cashier. And so I went over and I asked, you know, excuse me, where's the restroom? Come to find out it's one of these places where you take a disgusting community key <gasps> and you walk <gasps> around back. <laughs> to, and I, so immediately Between I'm the dumpster like, and the ice machine, oh, you got yeah. like a old rickety door. Uh -huh. yeah, so that, <laughs> like a, hubcap so yes, yes. Just a single exposed light bulb swinging yeah god knows what's happened in we've there. all been in this bathroom yeah yeah, yeah 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 except for me i have not been in the bathroom you had never yes because i turned that key walked in took one look no way no Whoa. way i was like disgusting this place is disgusting no way so i can hold it 
I was going to say Gordon on the Ramsay Gumbel all of a Death sudden Con <laughs> chart that you have going on here, which is like the you know you get the little inkling, then the cramping. Yeah. Are we at like a two, three at this point? Because you still thought you out of on a scale of five, five being it's yeah. lava flow. You happening. still believed you were in control at this. Yeah, point. Yeah, so <laughs> denial is very strong. It is very strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so in my mind, I was at a two. In reality, mm-hmm. I was at a four. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Our ego so gets us. Like, yeah. we're like, I can do uh-huh. this. And you're like, sometimes don't believe you're in like, yourself. I can hold this another hour. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> so I walked back into the gas station, handed the key back, went on my way, hand sanitized myself up. Was just like, oh, can't believe I almost did that. Gross. <laughs> 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 and I kid you not, I think I made it 10 minutes. Before I was like, oh, my God, what (laughs) have I done? What have I done? You passed up a golden palace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I would have done anything to go back to the gas station. station. (laughs) The oasis in the desert. (laughs) You passed it. (laughs) I knew at this point I couldn't even last the 10-minute drive back. Mm -hmm. Like, I I was was in a bad place. (laughs) So I start looking. I'm driving down the highway. Um, the highway is surrounded by trees, but it's not like you can just go into the trees and have a private little restroom there. You would have to run quite a distance <laughs> through some yeah. tall grass to get to the trees. And I was like, I don't have that in me. No, <laughs> oh, you're not it would be it to too the late. Trees. Yeah. yeah, you're not making it to the trees. No, absolutely not. <laughs> to make things even worse, <laughs> it was a real straight shot that I was on. And I could see that there was like a cleanup crew up ahead. Oh, well, you're going to need that. Call them. (laughs) (laughs) 311, (laughs) non emergency. (laughs) Do you guys have a hose out there? (laughs) So I'm like, oh my gosh. At the very least, they probably have a bucket. Right. And that would have been helpful. It would have. So I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'm going to do this, I have to pull over to the side of the road. Right now, because if I go any further, I might do this in front of an audience of people yes. who are cleaning up on the side of the highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're just trying so. to get their community service hours in. <laughs> just, somebody's just like, I like this job because it's Zen. I was thought I'd be yeah. like, digging ditches, yeah. and now I have to. Come on, man! Just now I'm seeing this horrified woman who's yeah. too good to go and poop in a public <laughs> restroom. If you were working on a roadside community or cleaning crew, and you a woman shit in front of you, you may be entitled to conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you, they're like she had a whole stretch of highway and this yeah. is where she chose to pull over and do this she could have run into the woods yeah. <laughs> uh. so i'm i'm in this very dire situation i know i've got seconds on the clock before blast off <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, to add to this, I had my new puppy, Peanut, right next to me oh, in the past. Peanut, season. not the puppy. Innocent, <laughs> innocent victim in this whole story. But I'm like, okay, Peanut. okay. I've accepted. Peanut senses a shift in the emotion in the car. <laughs> yes. like shaking. Yeah. Peanut, Peanut knows. knows. Peanut knows something's yeah. going on. She absolutely did. <laughs> so I, I realized, okay, this is happening. I've accepted my fate. I rolled down my window. I took the lid off of my iced tea, dumped the rest of the tea, and I decided the only thing I could do was Mm -hmm. just, you know, pull my pants down, lift myself up in the Mm -hmm. driver's seat, and put that cup underneath myself to catch... (laughs) Like a soft serve ice cream machine. (laughs) There you go. Mm -hmm. And those are often broken at McDonald's, but it was working in that car that day. (laughs) (laughs) So, I, I do that. I... You know, dump it out. I lift myself up. I put the cup under and I realized because I'd gotten the large iced tea, which is just a huge cup, I had to lift myself so high up (laughs) that every passing car was like, like, damn. So, like, how is she driving? She's four feet off the seat. She's levitating. Do you see this? This woman's levitating. And why yeah, yeah, is she was... wearing pants while she <laughs> levitates? We'll get a Freaky Friday story. I saw a possessed woman on the side of the road in North Carolina. <laughs> exactly. Bush out, just floating right in the driver's seat. It was crazy. She had a dog in the car. <laughs> it was a mess. 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, because I can't, you know, just have people see everything. I mean, they would see the whole thing with me right up Main night. Street. So I'm like, yeah. okay. Which I think would be a crime at some point. I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'd be on a list somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, the cup is out. Can't do the cup. I looked, I looked, I look. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I found a bed, bath, and beyond bag. In my back seat. Beyond is where <laughs> that's, that's right. Where this never is going. When this is where the beyond place, comes in. Bed, bath, and beyond. Little did they know. It's like Mary How Poppins beyond, bag. Some would take it. It never fills up. It just keeps. It's just yeah. unlimited. The beyond is the bag. And you reach in, you find a, a lamp, you find my yeah. shit, you find yeah. who knows. Do like a Keurig machine? What? Yeah. <laughs> I registered for this. So yeah, I pooped into a bed, bath, and beyond bag that day. My dog cried the whole time. She didn't know what was happening. It was terrible. <laughs> and then, because I don't believe in littering, I tied that up. Wow. And we drove the rest of the drive with the windows down. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was a horrible time. You know what? You, d- you didn't leave it for the cleanup crew. And <laughs> so that's right. like, like, they appreciate that. Every time in your life, if anyone gives you shit, about anything that you've done you're like listen i had the opportunity to <laughs> yes. just yeet a bag of diarrhea yes. out into the like what would be maybe arguably not the worst place it's not a children's playground you know it's the side of the road like a Absolutely. highway but i didn't so fuck you <laughs> you are the moral high ground forever that you did that you're such a better person than me immediately i would have tossed that out the side i you're i did toss person. the in and out bag Right into the parking lot of Albertson. So, um, and were there people all over the place? Absolutely, there the were. Grand opening, yeah. It was it was the grand reopening. They had remodeled, and they were there were balloons and and flags everywhere. Sure, now, while why you were not? Doing this, were you still driving? Oh no, 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 I pulled off to the side. Okay, you pulled over. Okay, okay. Safe on the shoulder of the highway. Is She's impressive. Like, mm. <laughs> She's like, I gotta make the time. I gotta make the time. I can't be late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well Amazing. you angel that you did that you kept it with you. Um you yeah. You survived a lot of near misses that day. Yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. fact that you survived unscathed with only, well, a slightly scathed with only the experience. I did the a idea of, of, ever, of ever just shitting your pants. Did that yes. ever cross your mind? No, I didn't want to shit in my pants oh, okay. and sit Thank in you. it for an hour. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because right. when my incident happened, the first thing my husband asked me was, why didn't you just shit in your pants? And I was like, what? Because I'm not a toddler. I? Yeah. I, <laughs> I believe my answer was, these pants require dry cleaning. And so I was not. <laughs> Did you go? I, I would have just had to throw them away. I'm never Absolutely. Those oh, You're for like, sure. These are really for nice sure. jeans. Like, yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. understand. That's like a, such a man question of like, no, like these are really good jeans. When you find a good pair of jeans. I can't I will ruin in my leather seats of my car before I ruin these jeans, which is what I did. <laughs> oh man! Well, was this a, so? Was this on the way to the boyfriend or on the way back? On the way back, and I gotta okay, say, gosh. I think there's Whew. something interesting about telling this story to men because obviously this was not a story that I told to a lot of people before I told it on the podcast, thinking that 12 <laughs> people would listen to it. Same. Right? The one thing I've noticed is that it was really only men who would come back later and be like, but why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? And it's like, dude, let me tell you, <laughs> time was a ticking. Yeah. You know, things yeah. were happening that were officially beyond my control. I didn't have time no. to, like, you know, come up with a big game plan. But honestly, <laughs> such a creative problem solve. Like, that yeah, absolutely. Was, you know, like, to, for the man to just be like, oh, I just sit there and shoot. No, we, we can be creative. Look, you looked yep. around, you cooked with the ingredients you had. And I was going to say, you're, absolutely. you're limited to the things you have in your car. Yes. And we're taking peanut off the table. Yes. <laughs> so we got to <laughs> find something else. And I think you, you did the best you could. And I, my question though is if you could have made it back to that, uh, gas station bathroom, would you have gone in there or would you still have preferred to have gone in your car? Oh, I would have gone to the gas station bathroom. Okay. This story okay. has changed me. Now, <laughs> if she poops everywhere. Everywhere. Now. Any, oh, any, for you. any toilet is my toilet, officially. I am, I, I like learned that. that day, I'm not too good for anything. 
you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You Sometimes know what? We, could always be we learn lessons the hard way. We sure That's do. Really, <laughs> we sure do. It's a very humbling oh. moment for me. But yes. you're so generous oh, yes. to share it with so many of the rest of us. So now we know if you're given an option of a flushing toilet, don't turn your nose up at it. You take the toilet. So much worse. I also want yeah. to thank you. Thank you all for giving me compliments after telling a story about shitting in a bed, bath, and beyond. Bed. I did not anticipate the compliments, but I will take them. <laughs> There's a lot of positivity in the story. Creative yeah. problem solving. Like I said, generosity, vulnerability. I love Denial. it. You are doing the Lord's work <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But also a consideration. You yeah. didn't pull over yeah. while, and make like a cleanup crew who they're like, well, this is what we do. So I guess yeah. just come on over. Yeah. We'll hose you down. You did, um, <laughs> you suffered and peanut mm-hmm. for a or whole other hour before you, you got home. You know what's kind of a silly thing that I didn't tell when I told this story originally on our podcast. And in retrospect, it like it seems sillier and sillier the more I think about it. But in my mind, at that moment, I was like, I can't throw out this bag because this cleanup crew <laughs> will see a full bag from Bed Bath & Beyond and become oh. so excited that no. they'll think <laughs> it's full of merchandise. And yeah. ah! Ma'am, ma'am, there was no risk of that. No, I, yeah, I, you I mean, know they were like, like, now? But in like, my mind, I was like, they're going to think it's a fresh set of towels. Yeah. You know? yeah. I was like, oh, like, a complete bedding set? A bed in a bag? <laughs> How? Great. I needed new bedding. I yeah. don't know if Bed Bath & Beyond just sold pudding out of its container. <laughs> this is crazy. It's free oh, and it's like, no. It's not shaped like anything they sell. Oh, no. <laughs> It's, not a, it's clearly not a pot or a bag. No. <laughs> but that is very thoughtful that you're like, wouldn't yeah. that be a horrible surprise for I someone? Thinking they're w- gonna it, get... I mean, it would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you'd be so happy. And then what mm. a disaster to yeah. discover. Roller coaster of emotions. So, yeah. man, what a roller coaster well, of emotions. I, from one to another, I, I feel you. Uh-huh. I know exactly what you went through and yeah. sisters in poop. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. That is what we are. We Bonded forever. And Heather too. Now, Brandy, be honest. She can't be no. honest. She will never, she pretends she doesn't fart. So, I mean, that's, no, I fart. <laughs> I fart into a toilet. That's where my thoughts oh, I, go. I'm a bathroom farting family. I we're am a here. bathroom farter. I am. That's, yeah, we're that's what I do. Family. Yeah. Yes. We don't be real. You know what? Out. Everyone appreciates that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or I'll be like, I'm going to go let the dogs out and then I'll just go rip out my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the air. It's lovely. <laughs> My neighbors are probably like, that house next door is nuts. <laughs> just constant farting at baby. Like, she does impressions, bad ones, and then she's just like ripping ass constantly. <laughs> right in front of that poor rain yeah. camera. <laughs> yeah. like, hey, honey, are you farting outside? <laughs> no. She just talks to herself. It's weird. <laughs> I am that house on next door for sure. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad we got to hang out with you all today. Uh, what too. a time we've yes, had. This was wonderful. <laughs> from crying, laughing. Yes. Uh, I hope that we've made the, the folks that have signed the petition. Thank you for signing the petition to yes. bring us together. Here we yes. are. We hope it was everything you dreamed of. Because it was everything I dreamed of. It was of. everything I dreamed of and more. And, and more. I can't wait to do more stuff with you both. You're Absolutely quite awesome. the delight. Yes. So much fun. So much so fun. I know much fun. I, was, uh, I was bummed we didn't get to bump into each each other i know people kept us. asking yeah. us if we met you at obsessed with and i was like we never like, did run into each other we met I no never, one really i don't think i even nurse. saw y'all <laughs> yeah we were like yeah. uh go to the event and and bounce yeah. so yeah. yeah we have to we'll have to i'm sure we'll be in kansas city at some time soon or yeah. i don't know if you'll yeah. ever come back to dallas but if you are we gotta hang out for sure absolutely for sure. Awesome. Absolutely. absolutely yeah that's for good sure. we well, love it well thank you both yeah. so much and where can people find you and your show and all your other wonderful stories um, our podcast is Let's Go to Cork. We're on all. I think that sounded like I said Let's Go to Cork. It's Let's yeah, go to good Cork job, Brandy. With a T <laughs> on the end. Uh, Someone is going to make a podcast called Let's Go to Cork. Right, and a wine podcast. Oh my gosh! Going That's to wine spinoff. Yeah. It's your spin off. Then you podcast can just and we get to winery. drink wine. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Great. Trademark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we're on all of the podcast platforms. You can find us also on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and we have a Patreon. If you're interested, 
Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, check thank us out. you both. Yeah, yeah check out Let's Go to Court wherever out. you get your podcasts. And thank you both so much for being here today, Brandy and Kristen of Let's Go to Court and soon Let's Go to Cork. They're uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> thank y'all. Yeah. That's in the thank works right so now. Much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much uh, for having us. This was so fun. Of course. Well, thank you again to Kristen and Brandy from Let's Go to Court. Make sure you go listen to them wherever you get your podcast. And thank you to everybody else for sending in your Freaky Friday stories. If you have an odd but true story, maybe you've encountered Bigfoot, you've seen a UFO, you had a brush with true crime, or you felt the presence of an otherworldly being, send them in at SinisterHood.com slash Freaky Friday. If you like our free episodes, you'll love our Patreon bonus content. We got so much stuff up there right now. We've been saying 500 hours. We're probably getting closer to 600 hours. Easily. And we just posted a new segment that we got of hypothetical situations, which uh, <laughs> is very fun. This was yeah. a very fun one. We took some twists and turns. We also have an all new true crime headlines coming up for you soon. We've got some mini sods coming out, but we also have a whole entire archive of all kinds of stuff. So head over to Patreon for that. Plus you can head over to sinisterhood.com and click shop on the top banner to check out all of our merch, like t-shirts, mugs, totes, stickers, and even clothes for your kiddos. I don't know that anything is going to ship by the time Christmas comes, but if you need you know a last, will? I was going to say, if you need a last Damn minute yeah. gift, Patreon, you can give the gift of Patreon digitally. Oh, Patreon too. Yes, but also Cameo. Oh, but Cameo Patreon as well. and Cameo, you got you got them. We got your back. So head over to sinisterhood.com and click shop if you want to get some merch and uh treat yourself for how hard you've worked this year. You deserve it. Absolutely. While you're on our website, you can also review the show, follow us on socials, and check out the episode description. You'll also find fun things like topic-based playlists and links to live show tickets when we have live shows. You can follow us on Instagram and threads at Sinisterhood Pod. Like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. You can check out the full video version of the interview with Brandy and Kristen on our YouTube channel. And check us out over on TikTok as well. We also have a TikTok shop, and you can get some deals over there at Sinisterhood Podcast. And if you need a last-minute gift that will ship with some... 24 hour delivery available. Head over to Cameo and order a personalized custom video shout out. And it's the gift you know they don't already have, and it doesn't take up any room. So go to Cameo.com and let us deliver your holiday greeting. Christy, where are you at online? I'm on Instagram at Christy and Wallace and TikTok at Christy or GTFO. Heather? I'm pretty much everywhere at Heather versus the world. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Mm-hmm.